Hello everybody, Nitsu here, and welcome back to my My Hero Academia Season 5 Reaction Series here on the channel today, and we are here for episodes 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so we left off last time with uh, the official beginning to the grand match of Class 1A versus Class 1B in uh, five different four-people teams on each side. And this is this is exciting. This is gonna be a good arc, I can tell. And we already started off with the first match. And before we even get into that, Shinso is here and he is doing his thing already. Uh, I like the idea that they put him on that like, he's gonna participate in two different battles on both sides. He's at one side, yeah, at one point he's gonna fight for class one A and then for class one B. Obviously, right now he's fighting with team one of class one A. Um, and there are some super interesting things that had happened with Shinso uh, during this entire arc. The one thing I want to bring up immediately is that, I mean, obviously the he's uh, the time when he's working with Class 1B is going to be in the fifth match, and he's going to be on the same team with Monoma. Now, we know what Monoma's quirk does. It copies other people's quirks for a short period of time, meaning he could copy Shinso's quirk, meaning he could... You know, just touch Shinso, grab his quirk, and then, like, get into a situation where he has, like, a direct, like, he's, like, getting into his usual mode of myself and mocking someone from Class 1A, and then asking them a question, and they don't know that, you know, he has Shinso's quirk, they answer it, and then they're fucked, right? So, there's many things that had happened with Shinso during this arc, not just by himself, but also including people, with people like Monoma, who can, you know, just take quirks. It's still a crazy quirk, just being able to boom copy, and, you know, that's... I wonder, there has to be like some limits to it, I don't know if we had, I mean, he might have explained it a bit in Season 2, I don't remember, but that's a strong work. But yeah, we started uh, the first match, which uh, on Class 1A side had Kaminari, Kirishima, Tsuyu, Koda, and also Shinso as the extra fighter, and then on Class 1B side, we had uh, Shiozaki, Shishida, Kosei, and Rin. So... By the looks of it, Shishida is out. He got brainwashed, so he might he might just be out for the remainder of the battle, like I said, if they can capture him. <sighs> so at this point, if they can get Koda out of the air prison, it's a 5v3. Uh, uh, Kirishima and Su, they did knock back a bit, and they did take a hit, but they should still be fine, especially uh, Kirishima. So Su is a bit more... Uh, she's a bit more glass cannony, a little bit, uh, but obviously Kirishima is quite the defense, so he should not be hurt by just being flown into a building one time. <laughs> Which sounds kind of weird if you say it like that, but he should be fine. Uh, and if they can, so, I mean, granted, Kosei's twerk has gotten stronger during Season 2. Bakugo was just able to, you know, with his explosion, just boom and just break it. And then reach for the the thing, the points they had. Uh, but obviously he's improved, he can now make the air prison. But I'm pretty sure that with, like, a good hardening, Kirishima could punch through that and get Koda out of there. Uh, which means we would be in a 5v3 situation. The biggest wild card in this situation is Rin, because we don't know what the fuck he does. We know what Shiozaki does, she's somewhere on her own acting as sort of like a distraction scout a bit. Uh, obviously, she should have explained to their whole plan in the end of last, oh, the end of last episode. But obviously, Shiozaki is very strong, and once she gets back into, you know... Kosei is currently alone in a technically 4v1 situation on the back of Shishidas, <laughs> so he might be in trouble. But like I said, we have no idea where Rin is or what Rin even does, we don't know what his twerk is. So we're just gonna have to see. He's the biggest wildcard right now. It is definitely in favor of Class 1A, but with the wild card of Rin, and also I'm not sure where Shiozaki is right now, Class 1B can make a comeback, and if they can't get Koda out of that air prison, this could still be uh this is still kind of an even match, really, if we consider all the possibilities. So I'm I'm stoked to see where this fight is gonna go. With that being said, let's jump into it. First episode of the set, uh like always, reaction will be in the description down below. There is the link for just all the reactions back to back, and once uh, the episode is over, you can come back here for discussion. So with that being said, let's pull up the actual reaction screen right here and let's get into it. My Hurt Demia, season five, episode number four, in three, two, one, let's Good episode. 
good episode once again. No bad episode yet this season. My Academia doesn't have bad episodes usually. I'm loving the way that they use Shinso already. This was just a... Because these fights, often in Shonen, especially if you get further down the line, you get to a point where it's less about strategy and more about who's just stronger. Like, this, like this was a big thing in Naruto. We kind of saw a bit of it happen in MHA in Season 4. Uh, where strategy, I mean, it was still there, but it really mostly was like, okay, how strong is your twerk and how well can you use it? Just, you know, not even thinking much about what the enemy does. But this is full on, like, we are full on strategists, and this is full on team combat. This is 4v4, 5v4 in this case. But this is straight up important team combat. And they were able to, I mean, even when Beep was, you know, they were fighting really well at one point, and they had. The advantage kept switching. It was like at one point it was even, then when B had the clear advantage, then when A had the advantage. And you know, like Shinso, in the end, Shinso was the reason they won. Because uh, because of Shinso, Shishida got so paranoid that he was that he was not will willing to talk with Rin anymore. To the point where he missed the fact that Rin called him a pocket beast. Uh, which, I mean, I guess is something that just, I mean, I'm assuming it was like his previous hero name, and then he changed it, because... Uh... Uh, she was actually called him Apocalypse Beast, and then he called he said his name was something else, something with a G. So I'm assuming he just like changed his hero name for some reason. Uh, but obviously uh, Shinso wouldn't know that, so uh, when he didn't even pay attention to when Rin called him Apocalypse Beast, which was kind of like Rin's attempt to call out to be like, "Hey, I'm the real one. Look out! I'm about to be smacked in your back behind you." Which was also just a great move from uh, from Tsuyu there. Since she herself is not that physically strong, but you know she can, with that ton, she can carry so much weight, and she just you know she, she just slammed it into him and into his back like that. Can we also talk about Kosei and him kind of being a bit weird? <laughs> I mean, look, I get it. It's it's kind of an interesting situation to be in to be wrapped up in a very long tongue, but I mean that was an an interesting reaction from Kosei right there. Uh, but. Yeah, overall, this was just a really good episode, and I'm loving this this strategy back and forth. I was, at some points, I was uh, this fight really went into expectations, uh, into directions I was not expecting. So, good stuff, Horikoshi, for writing entertaining stuff. I enjoyed this episode a lot. And with that being said, let's move into the next episode. Like always, uh, reaction down below. We will be back with the discussion in just a second. And yeah, let's jump into it. My Heritademia, Season 5, Episode Number 5, and 3, 2, 1, let's go. And that was My Hero Academia, Season 5, Episode Number 5. Uh, new improv move, something like that. Alright, well, it went pretty well near the end, and then it didn't go so well at the end, because. Yeah, like I said, it, it's essentially been a 4v1 against Kuro this entire time, and then uh, <laughs> Team uh, 1A was like, oh yeah, yeah, right, there's like three other people we're supposed to fight. And they were quickly reminded by that uh, because of some mushrooms. So I do wonder what exactly Tomori's court is other than just sprout mushrooms, because I mean, those mushrooms have to do something. I mean, just having mushrooms grow on you is kind of gross, but like, they have to have some effect, otherwise it's just like, oh yeah, they just have a bunch of bumps on me, I guess, whatever. Uh, I guess if there's too many, you're trying to just be drowned in your... You just become a big blob of mushroom. But I'm assuming they have, like, some other effect. Uh, which we're gonna have to see next episode. Which still leaves Mondra's quirk a mystery. I, I, I don't know what someone... I, I need to look this up. I don't know if Mondra is a male or a female. I want to say it's a female, but I'm actually not sure. Just in, just in case. Uh, Mondra Fukudashi... Uh, oh, it is a dude, never mind. For some reason, I thought it was a girl. Well, now I know. And I want to know what the fuck his quirk is, because other than his head just being a manga panel, I don't know what the ability that gives you. <laughs> um, I don't know why I thought it was a girl. Well, now I know. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell with, uh, <laughs> you know, just the torso, which we haven't really seen since season two. And even then, I don't know if we ever got a full body shot of them. It's kind of easy to identify them by the fact that they don't have a face. Instead, they have a manga panel. So yeah, I do want to know what Mondra's twerk is and what the fuck he does with it. Uh, just, this is just like a Rin situation like last time. Even though, I mean, Rin's twerk... 
it really it was not nearly as much of a wild card as I thought it was going to be in the first fight because it was just you know it's 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 a cool twerk, but it didn't help him that much. Uh, it did essentially guarantee uh, Kaminari's capture, but in the end, it didn't matter anyway because he couldn't hit Sue with it, and she just you know overwhelmed him. Uh, but I want to see what what his twerk does. Obviously, then we know what Tendo does, and now we also kind of know what Komori does, even though not quite. But then we'll have to see. And they didn't even manage to capture Toro. It is once again a 4v4 situation, uh, even though Momo and Toru now have mushrooms going on them. Uh, essentially, we th this fight, the entire episode has been... Th this, this, th the fight has been set back to zero. Essentially, the fight hasn't really happened. The only difference that happened now is that there's mushrooms on Toru and Momo, whatever that means. It's definitely some sort of disadvantage, if I were to assume. But we got the bat story. I was really like surprised when the Shia has I art was, was over, and we barely knew anything about you know what uh, Tokoyami's work study was like, because he was the only other person who went onto a work study. Granted, uh, Hot's agency didn't partner up with Night Eye at all, uh, but I was still expect to at least see a bit of him. But now we got a bit of it. Even then, it's not that much, uh, other than between the internship and the work study. Tokoyami really. Sped up a bit, and then the whole the scene of the the flying was really cool. And yeah, Totoyama can now fly with uh, what was it Dark Fallen Angel? Cool move name, cool move in general. He can fly. He's a bird. He should be able to fly. Okay, yeah, like I said, this fight has been essentially been brought back to its beginning with a bit of a difference. I want to see how this turns out. Pride, no, I, I'm, I'm assuming this art might take a bit longer. We might actually this entire first. Core might just be this arc until like episode 12 or 13. Uh, because I thought we wouldn't have one fight, one episode, but this essentially nothing has happened in this fight yet, an entire episode has passed. So, uh, yeah, not what I was expecting, but hey, I'm not mad at it. With that being said, let's jump into the last episode of this set, episode number 6. Reaction is down in the description. At this point, you should know. Reaction is down there, and we will be back with the discussion here in just a second. Let's start drawing My Heart to Demia, Season 5, Episode number 6, in 3, 2, 1, let's go. So that was My Heart to Demia, Season 5, Episode number 6. I mean, it's kind of sadistic, but hey, if it gets, if if it's, it's a win condition and you might as well use it. But growing mushrooms in someone's windpipes. Damn, alright Kumori. <laughs> alright. I mean, I was saying those mushrooms had to have some other effect. They really didn't, it's just, you know, mushrooms on you. And I mean, yeah, granted, they are highly disorientating. And Toru did, you know, ha it did happen to Toru, but I can't pretend he would just turn into a big blob of mushroom. Uh, but man, one, one A fought pretty well, even when they were at such a disadvantage near the end. <laughs> I really thought at least Toru were able to take out uh, Manga, but, I mean, Tendo came with the save at the end. That was just a really good fight. Uh, and then I'm loving all these tactics. The, the thermal goggles was a really cool idea. The, you know, the ethanol to, you know... Uh, not have the mushrooms grow on you. Uh, when they thought through most of th uh, most of the possibilities they had, but I mean, I guess they didn't consider the fact that Kumori can just grow straight up mushrooms in your windpipe, which is fucked, but it's it's effective, so you can't really blame her for it. Um, even if that would have worked out, it would have still been Tokoyami versus both Manga and Kendo, which would have also not been an easy fight at all, so... He would have had the advantage with the thermal goggles, but still. Because uh, Aoyama was already out, and at that point so was uh, Toru and Momo. Good, good fight, good fight. Uh, next up... It's gonna be, I think it's Todoroki's team? It's Todoroki or Bakugou's team, it's one of the two. Uh, against... I, I don't know who the third team is, but I have it written down, so I should just look it up. It's Pony, Hononuchi, Taibata, and Tetsu Tetsu. Okay. 
Uh, and then I don't know if it's the Bakugo or the Todoroki team. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, the Bakugo team had Sato, Jiro, and actually I forgot who the other person was. And the Todoroki team definitely had Ida. And I think Ojiro as well. I'm not really remembering. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, next up for 1B is going to be um, Pony, Hononuchi, Kaibara, and Tetsu Tetsu. Which is exciting just because Tetsu Tetsu is fighting, and I like Tetsu Tetsu. He's fun. Uh, also interested to see what the others uh, are going to do. Especially uh, Pony, because I think we had like, a small clip of her in like Season 3. I don't quite remember what it was, but I remember her being like briefly in the spotlight for like a minute or so. I don't—I actually don't remember it at all, but I remember that she was there because I remember her. So I do want to see what her quirk is. And then, I mean, Horonuchi's design looks cool, and Kaibara is trying to just—I don't know—he looks, he looks very bland. He's—he looks a lot like like Kosei, where they're just like, really bland. But he might have a cool quirk. We will see. Probably next episode. Uh, but yeah, that was a. That was very entertaining. I enjoyed this arc so far. is staying me real, real hype because it's, it's fun seeing all these new works. It's fun seeing all of One A, you know, together again and doing their thing. Everyone getting some action. Tokuyami and Momo were great in these episodes. Yeah, not much uh, else to say. So uh, next reaction set will be episodes seven to nine, where we will most likely cover the. Uh, team Bakugo and the Team Todoroki fight against uh, Team 3 and 4 of 1B. And Team 4 was uh, Kamakiri, Setsuna, Awase, and Kojiro. So the weird dino dude, the girl with like kind of like stales, Awase, the melt guy, and I, th I think I remember correctly, uh, the guy, I think, was it, wasn't he like a glue dispenser or something like that? I remember like something coming out of his head in Season 2, because I remember he was there as well, Kojiro. Uh, I might be misremembering, who knows? I also thought that Mondo was a girl, so I could be completely wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I enjoyed these episodes. I hope, uh, hopefully you did as well, and hopefully you also enjoyed my reaction. And like I said, 7 to 9 will be next. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, you can, of course, subscribe to the channel and check out more of my content. I would very much appreciate it. You can also like the video or dislike it, whichever. It's feedback, and if you have actual feedback for me, the, ten, uh, the comment section is down below where you can write things to me and I will read them. Don't spoil me on anything, please. And we can talk in the comment section as well. Which is going to be pretty fun. Uh, yeah, we are on uh, our road to grow this community. I guess 300 subs would be next. Which would be very cool. I'm always looking forward to welcoming new people into this community and having more people, you know. I really don't care much about just the actual subscriber number. I just want more people to be actively in the comments talking with me. Just, you know, as much as it, as, as fun it is to consume anime for me, uh, I try also just do it by myself and not record these videos. But obviously, even if it's just like five, ten, twenty people who watch these videos, if I can make their day somehow a little bit better, it is worth to me. Uh, so if that number can grow, I would just feel very warm inside, knowing that I can make people's days better. Uh, yeah. So enough of that tangent. That's going to be it for this reaction. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next time is signing out. Goodbye, everyone.